Hey everybody, Brian from the Cabinet Joint here. We're going to talk today about desk base cabinets, in particular this desk base two drawer cabinet. I'm going to get into the assembly in a minute, but before I do that, I want to walk you through some of the basics of the cabinet itself. First of all, all the desk base cabinets, whether it's a two drawer or a full door, anything in the home office collection has a short, flush two and a half inch toe kick. So if I open that, turn it so you can see it, there's no toe notch, and it's just a flush um, front frame that goes right to the ground. So they all come that way, and that's to, to be able to maximize the drawer height space. All right, so I'm gonna get into the sizes in a minute, but this cabinet only comes 29 and a half high, and so the vendor, the manufacturer, is trying to make this cabinet so that it's maximizing the height of both of these drawers. If we used a four inch kitchen height toe kick, you're crunching the drawer space and you lose storage. So these are meant to be used by themselves in a home office. That brings me to another point. If you use these next to a kitchen cabinet, because you can get kitchen cabinets, you know, all sorts of various heights from us. Say you did a 29 and a half inch high um, full door base cabinet for a kitchen application, and you have a toe kick recess here, the cabinet's gonna be, the cabinet door is gonna be a couple inches higher than this one because of that four inch high toe kick recess or even a flush toe. The, door, the bottom door or drawer is hung much higher. It will not line up, so be aware of that. Don't slap this up against any cabinets that come out of our vanity or our base cabinet collection because they're not gonna line up. Let's talk about the sizes on this. This comes between 12 and 36 wide. You can get it in 16th inch increments, but 12 to 36 wide. The depths are 18, 21, and 24 only, three inch increments, 18, 21, 24. That's a function of the drawer glides being used. And then the height, again, I mentioned before, is fixed at 29 and a half. You cannot vary the height. It comes 29 and a half, which is a standard desk base height. So if you took a normal chair, you can slide under it and work comfortably. That's the main goal of these cabinets is to be worked at in a desk application, okay? Um, filing, I wanna talk about filing, particularly on this cabinet because a lot of customers misinterpret a desk base two drawer as being a filing cabinet. It can be used for files, but it does not come ready to use for files. Uh, you're gonna to have to add either a Pendaflex file storage system, which we do not sell, or if you look at the picture in the video that you're seeing next to me here, um, we do sell that system. You can talk to your cabinet coach about it, and that rail system kind of mounts inside the drawer box, and you can then use it for files, but it's not going to come standard with any file application. If you do the Pendaflex mentality, or really any filing, on a 15-inch version of this, you really couldn't do it with 12, but on a 15-inch version of this, people buy that wanting to use it for files. You can't run the files front to back, you know, where the files are stacked this way. You've got to turn your Pendaflex this way, and now your files are running horizontally because you don't have enough room inside there to fit an 11 and a half inch piece of paper with the filing system. So bear that in mind. If you go with a 15 inch, your file is gonna turn 90 degrees sideways, okay? But shop around for your desired uh, filing system and you can use these for that. If you're looking for lateral files, we also have a lateral file cabinet, LF2D, and that's meant for two big drawers with files running this way, lots of filing storage on those. So anyway, let's get into the assembly. It's not a whole lot different than your standard base cabinet, except for this little toe kick area. The assembly is identical, but let's get into it and show you how this goes together. All right, so let's get started on our desk base two drawer. Um, it's just a variation on a theme. These desk bases assemble just like a standard base. The difference being you have this flush two and a half inch toe kick instead of the toe notch you get on a kitchen height cabinet. Um, these are meant to sit lower, so Conestoga is giving you some extra storage again um, by making the toe kick go away a little bit. Um, because these are only 31 and a half high. Aside from that, they assemble just like a two drawer base. You'll notice um, I do not have any brackets for inset here. This is an overlay job. Go to the video below um, and reference that if you're doing inset, because you're gonna wanna put your brackets for your drawers on this cabinet before you assemble the box. They're very difficult to get on after assembly. If you're overlay, you don't need to worry about that. Um, tools and supplies, similar to every other cabinet we have. We've got our uh, 18 gauge stapler. A uh, bottle of white wood glue, we like the Type Bond too, but any white wood glue will do. Rubber mallet, pencil, wet rag. Uh, that, this cab is pretty standard. You don't need a lot of extraneous tools for this one. So let's get started. I'm gonna get going on the gluing of the front frame and show you that. Guys, okay, so I got my Type Bond too. We're gonna do what we usually do, which is glue these two shoulders, left and right of that deeper spline groove on both sides, and then where our cabinet top and bottom, top and bottom orient or connect. Um, on the outside. We don't want to glue this little tab on the inside because the glue will squeeze out to the inside of the cabinet. This does not get glued because there is no uh, partition there. So I'm just going to take my glue bottle and run a 
uh, a thin bead. We don't want too much. It ends up just squeezing out and making a mess, but just a nice thin bead of glue, consistent down both shoulders. And then again, on the outside of the cabinet top and the outside of the cabinet bottom. Oops. Okay. Um, now, I'm going to show you a trick. Some of our videos show this, some don't. Oftentimes, we just put the cabinet sides in and then slide the tops and bottoms in. When we're doing a base cabinet, the cabinet sides are awfully tall. They kind of want to fall away. So if you're doing this by yourself, one trick is finish side in, take your hanger cleat with the splines on it, and line the outer edge of the dovetail up with the dead center of that spline groove. Just press it into place, and now you've got something that will hold this cabinet side when I put it up. So I've got my cabinet side, here's my bottom with my wider section and my thinner section. So this is going to be oriented like this. I take my glue bottle again. Just put a little dollop of glue in there and slide that on. And you can move this around as needed. Okay. Grab my second one and do the exact same thing. We're just gonna put a little dollop of glue there. Slide this in. Make that cabinet go home. Okay, now we're gonna put our cabinet bottom in. We wanna make sure that finish side is in with the splines down. I'm gonna run a thin bead of glue halfway up that dovetail on both sides. And you can see how that is holding these sides from going out really nice. We'll find our dovetail here. Tap that in. We want to make sure we're fully seated all the way along the bottom here. I still got a fingernail width there, so I'm going to use my mallet to seat my parts. Do a visual inspection. I'm nice and tight now. Then I take my final spreader strip, finish side in, and I'm just going to, no glue yet, I'm just going to run this down couple of inches, and now I could put some glue there, because when you press this up into the cabinet back, that glue is gonna spread out. And now I wanna glue my vertical surface, not the horizontal one, we want the unfinished cabinet edge, the back edge to contact unfinished cabinet side material so your glue bond is better. Okay, I'll glue that one. All right, now, cabinet back, we have our flat brackets already installed. So you have two little pock marks. You're going to use your bloom um, tandem glide rear brackets. I'd mount them before you put the cabinet together. You don't have to. This is something you can put on after the cabinet's built. You're just having to reach into the back of the cabinet. So we like to put them on before assembly. We have it oriented so our bottom drawer is down, middle drawer. If you have this reversed by accident, when you put it on, you got to take all your brackets back off and manually locate them. So make sure you have this oriented correctly. Just line up the dovetail, or the, the dado, I should say. Tap that into place. And I'm going to step off screen here real quick. Grab a clamp. We do like to use a clamp for this next operation. Now you're just going to tap this up until this is seated inside. We're gonna grab a clamp here, squeeze all this together. And that just kind of keeps that um, spreader strip from dropping out of the dado. And I like to keep the cabinet sides. We have flush sides on this. We wanna keep these flush sides nice and tight together for this next operation, which is gonna be the stapling. So keep that clamp there until we're done. Grab your stapler. Now this cabinet, is different than any other cabinet we've filmed for assembly because both sides are finished and flush. Normally, you would take your pencil and you can see the center of this panel right here. That's where you want to put the nailer, so or the brads, staples. So you're going to put your pencil here and strike a line all the way down the cabinet and nail every three inches on that line because you're going to nail into this cabinet back. I can't do that on either side because both sides are finished. So how do you do that? Disconnect your air, pull the rubber tip off of your stapler. This will allow you to get the staple gun right up into the corner. Because what we're gonna do is keeping the gun at an angle, you can see the gun's at an angle, not straight up and down. We're gonna toenail that staple down into the cabinet side from the back so that we don't mar our finish with staples on the outside. I'm gonna reconnect my air. 
and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the few up here on both sides. And I'm gonna move this down. Get that one yet. Now we can do a few more on either side of the camp. What this clamp is doing is just keeping these sides nice and tight into the cabinet back. We get a nice tight juncture. Okay, now I can disconnect my air and put my rubber tip back on for the rest of the assemblies I'm going to do today. You take your clamps off. That one can stay on for a second. Oh, I wanna keep my air here. And now we just gotta staple the back on here and across the hanger cleat or the, the spreader strip. So what you have is a series of little um, holes, in, indentations. Those are lined up directly with the dead center of the half inch thick cabinet top and bottom. So I'm gonna put a brad or a staple on either side of those holes all the way across. And then one right up in the corner. Same over here at the top. Okay, pop the clamp off and show you what we've created here. Whoops, show you what we've created here. Ooh, heavy cabinet. Okay, now we need our glue rag because we're going to want to inspect the inside of the cabinet, see if we have any glue at the back and then wipe it all out. If we had any uh, glue get on our front frame, just make sure everything's wiped down and clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that in a minute. And then we're gonna do an alignment procedure to make sure our cabinet sides and front frame line up. Okay. All right, so we didn't have much glue squeeze out. That was nice and clean, but I got rid of what we did have. Now you wanna make sure your cabinet side and your front frame are lined up. There's not a little offset. In this case, there is. So I'm just gonna hit my cabinet side down until it's flush. Over here, I got my front frame has to go up. Actually, that's gonna go down. There. So now I have dead flush. And what that's doing is keeping your box square. If you don't have this aligned properly, um, you're gonna have an out of square or a racked cabinet. The front frame is what's squaring the cabinet up. Uh, so you're gonna wanna make sure that that's nice and level. Now, the last thing I would do on this cabinet, and I won't show this, but the last thing I would do on this cabinet because of the flush ends is clamp the front frame to the box. You want that finished frame to be as tight as possible to the finished side, or you're gonna have a shadow line there where you have a little seam. And that's really uh, pronounced on white cabinets. If you're not careful, white or light colored painted cabinets will really show that off. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and put three clamps on each side of this box. Um, so if you guys have any questions, just contact your cabinet coach, they'll walk you through it. Again, this cabinet goes together like any other base cabinet, the biggest difference being that two and a half inch bottom rail. Um, so other than that, the assembly is identical. If you ever have a question, give us a call. Thanks.